Hello and welcome to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. As you might have guessed, this show is about Haskell, which is a purely functional programming language. I'm your host, Taylor Fossack. I'm the lead engineer at IT Pro TV. Hey, Taylor. I'm Cameron. Uh, I'm also an engineer here, but I'm not the lead engineer. Uh, I'm just excited to be here today. I'm glad we, we get to do the show again. It's been a little while. Yeah, it has uh, been a little while. How, how are you doing? What are we talking about today? I'm doing well, and I'm really looking forward to talking about this post. Uh, it's titled Evaluation of Function Calls in Haskell, which you know just sounds riveting. But uh, mm-hmm. very exciting for me. And uh, it's by Laszlo Tretzky. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name right. I'm almost sure I'm not. And uh, we're pulling it from issue 168 of Haskell Weekly. And I'm still flabbergasted that we're up into the hundreds for issue numbers. That's crazy. It's a lot of articles, which is really cool. Um, you know, that, that we'll be able to kind of group all this stuff together. Yeah. But I'm really excited about that article. It sounds really, uh, really fascinating. Uh, reading over it, I was like, it was a little heavy because it, it talks a lot, it gets a lot nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think we should really start high level. Um, kind That's of a good place to start. A good overview, right? I could go really high level and be like, "What is a function?" You know, but <laughs> I think well, we can assume everybody knows. Yeah, th- that's fair. Um, but in this article, he talks a lot about um, kind of the the gist of it is coming from a chapter in uh, Haskell's programming from First Principles by Christopher Allen and Julie Marinaki. Yeah. Ooh, I nailed that. I was curious <laughs> what I was going to do. Um, and this is something they talk about. Um, they're kind of talking about preventing sharing on purpose. Um, so which is sharing. Yeah, what sharing. Is sharing. Yeah, that's kind of a weird concept because it's not something we think about usually. Um, so much so that it's a term a lot of people probably haven't heard of. Um, I'm sure many people are familiar with the fact that Haskell is a lazy language or non-strict. Mm-hmm. And what that means is that when you write a function call, it doesn't evaluate that immediately. It can wait until you actually need that thing before it evaluates it. And what sharing means is that if you have the same thing used in two places, maybe it will only actually be computed once and then it'll use the result in both of those places. Whereas in a strict language, you would be forced to compute it both times because you're using it twice. Hmm. Okay. So that's a real quick introduction of what sharing is. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up and too bad. sharing is always caring, so exactly. that's good. <laughs> um, well, I think we use sharing well, uh, but this article pre- presents a way to, to not share, to um, create a function that isn't shareable. Right. And yeah, they have kind of two motivating examples, mm-hmm. right? They have this uh, this lambda, this function that takes an argument and completely ignores it and then returns something. And they use that as an, as an example of something that doesn't share. It mm-hmm. you know keeps all of its toys for itself. Um, and then they have another example that um, functionally is exactly the same. Like the, the end result is the same, except that it allows sharing. And it does that by using the const helper function that's mm-hmm. in the prelude uh, to not have a lambda there and that allows ghc to analyze this a little more thoroughly and do this sharing optimization Mm. yeah which is really cool Mm -hmm. um which you know the way they use you know the const operator it's or the function it's not an operator Mm -hmm. um using the const function um, it makes the function point free right yeah Uh, as opposed to point full Uh, right so could you kind of talk about point free versus point full a little bit sure Point-free programming is definitely something that is, uh, you know, when, when people look at Haskell, they think about that a lot, like all these really dense expressions with a lot of function composition. And um, But really what it boils down to is that with point-free programming, you don't talk about your variable, or excuse me, your argument names. You, you don't actually list them out. So what we're used to in most programming languages is that when you write a function, you have to explicitly list all of the arguments that you take in. Mm-hmm. Um, and in Haskell, you can do that. And, you know, when you write a Lambda or a top level function declaration, that's the common way to do things. But if your function is just a series of other functions composed together and it takes its argument, it can be a little annoying to say, you know, f of x equals this function, open parenthesis, this other function, open parenthesis, this other function, x. Mm-hmm. And so point free lets you kind of rewrite that without mentioning the x at all and just say f equals F1 composed with F2 composed with F3. Right. Which is really nice uh, for kind of understandability and looking at it and seeing that it's just a pipeline of functions. Right. But specifically with regards to this blog post, point free is interesting because it changes the semantics of how it actually runs. And, you know, we've talked about sharing already, so it should come as no surprise that it influences sharing. Right. And, and yeah, it's, it's behind the scenes that, um, 
things are different, right? Because if you look at you know the lambda versus the const composition, like it doesn't look that different mm -hmm. um, in Haskell, um, but they kind of touch on um, something called core, right? Yeah, and core is something that hopefully, or maybe, maybe not hopefully, that's the wrong way to put it. Generally speaking, day to day, if you're writing Haskell code, you're not going to have reason to go look at the core that it produces. Mm -hmm. But you can think of core as the first step in the compilation pipeline. And core could be, it, it isn't this, but essentially you can think of it as a very minifl, minified version of Haskell that doesn't have any syntactic sugar. And because of that, it ends up having a lot of lambdas and a lot of case statements. So it's not as sweet as Haskell, is that what <laughs> yeah. you're telling me? It's a little sour maybe or bitter. I'm mm, not sure which flavor okay. it would be. <laughs> no, none, nonetheless, it's still part of, of Haskell and, and the compilation process. Right. And the reason that core kind of comes into this discussion is that when we talk about sharing, it's not apparent when you look at Haskell source code if something will be shared or not. There are some kind of heuristics that this blog post um, talks about, especially at the end, that tell you when you can expect something to be shared or not. Mm -hmm. But the only way to be sure is to look at the core. And you can tell GHC to output the core so that you can look at it. And as I said, it doesn't have any syntactic sugar, so it ends up being really verbose a lot of the time, mm -hmm. which means it's not something you typically want to be looking at all the time. It'd, it'd be like, it's like the assembly code of Haskell in mm -hmm. a way. Um, it's, it's very direct and straightforward, but also very wordy because of that. Mm. Um, but, but I bring all this up because the, the sharing, you know, this expression that does share versus one that doesn't can become very clear in core, whereas it's not clear at all in Haskell. Right. Because I mean, but to me, uh, uh something when I was looking at this, I was like, what is this? And they're like, it's core. And I was, I was confused because, and it makes sense, but everything is a Lambda. Yeah. And in this, the, like part of the argument in this, you know, blog post is like, this Lambda is not shareable, which looking at it in core makes sense, but mm -hmm. it's still more confusing because there's so many Lambdas. <laughs> right. Like, uh, they're everywhere. Whereas in Haskell, it's almost unusual to see a Lambda. Um, often it'll be a top level declaration or some point free expression. But yeah, but then when you compile it down to core, there's Lambdas everywhere. Um, you get a Lambda, <laughs> you get a Lambda. We all get Lambdas. Um, and that could also be a little confusing in the context of sharing because what they're saying is at the Haskell level, this Lambda prohibits sharing. Mm -hmm. But at the core level, they both turn into Lambdas. So it can be a little weird to keep those kind of the core Lambda and the Haskell Lambda separate. Right. Because it looks like the core Lambda for the function that is shareable, um, it has record syntax for the function in a let block that mm -hmm. allows you to, to you know, reuse it over and over and over again. Yeah. Which is kind of neat. Yeah. And that actually gets at the crux of this sharing thing because um, bringing ourselves back up to the Haskell level, the point free expression, the one that uses const, that one the argument that you pass into it is shareable because GHC can look at that and see that it's function application. And it can look at the argument you're passing in and saying, well, you actually end up using this twice. And I don't, you know, Haskell is feeling lazy. So it says, I'm not going to compute this thing twice. I'll just do it once and use it in both places. Yeah. Um, and then when you change that into a Lambda, it can't do that analysis inside of the Lambda because every time you call a Lambda, your expectation as a programmer is that it's going to run that function again. It's right. not going to pull something out and say, well, actually, this part is constant, so I'm going to optimize it away. Right. It's not that smart. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I know. Oh, it's fair. It's fair. Um, I, I'm i just reading through this um, you know, example again, which I encourage um, all of our listeners to go check out this article yeah. and to kind of see these examples we're talking about. because it, It's a great post, and it goes into a lot of detail. Right. And it's, it's a little hard to see, like, you know, as us we're talking about like yeah. what's actually happening <laughs> visualize uh, the functions in your mind's right, eye right because we haven't even told you what the main little function that they're trying to, <laughs> to make shareable is and it's it's trace which <laughs> i looked at this and i was like taylor what what does this do um so i know it's a little bit of a side note but uh, i just want to touch on like what is trace sure i think it's a great aside because trace is something that doesn't come up often but when it does come up it's super handy the real quick way to explain it is that trace is like put Sterlin or print or something like that, except that you don't have to be in IO to do it. You can do it from a pure function or pure expression. Hmm. And 
it can be a little tricky because most people come from strict languages and in a strict language, if you say, um, you know, if you put a log line before you return some value, you generally know about when that's going to be print out. Cause you can sort of like trace the execution in your head and say, first it'll go here, then it'll go here. Haskell is different because it doesn't do that linear execution, that linear step. Um, so if you throw a trace in, you may actually see the output some other place than you expected because Haskell waited to evaluate that thing until some other time. And then by the time that it did, that's when it prints out the trace. Right. When it's um, actually needed. Right. Um, so yeah, I, th I think I may have got ahead of myself a little bit, but trace is a function that you give it a string and some value to return and it will print out that string when that value is requested, mm -hmm. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's like a pure way to print something out. Um, and it's evaluated. Right? Yes, it exactly. It when it's evaluated. And that's why they use it in this blog post because they want to show you when things get evaluated and in particular when something gets evaluated twice versus only being evaluated once. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to show in pure code in Haskell because you, it's an effect. Evaluating something is essentially an effect. Right. Should generally happen in IO. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they kind of spend some time talking about the evaluation of sharing versus evaluation of not sharing, um, which was, was, was cool to kind of like conceptualize what that means mm -hmm. um, because, you know, sometimes you're working in a function that, you know, you get this big data set to, to really give back a small set of data, you know. So sometimes you have a large heap mm -hmm. that you don't want to keep around, so you don't really want to share it. Mm -hmm. And so maybe this is a, that's a moment you would want to, you know, choose not to share something. Yeah, uh, exactly. Need it when you, you know, call it that one time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easy to look at this and think, well, shouldn't we always share things? Because there's not much point in computing the same thing twice because you know you're going to get the same result. But as you said, if the thing you're producing is really large and the, you know, the first time you use it and the second time you use it are very far apart in time, then you're holding onto that thing in memory for a long time. And if it's big and you ha you do a lot of those computations, you may run out of memory holding onto these values that you might need later. Right. So you might as well just throw them away and compute them again when you need them. Just like say deuces. Yeah. See you later, data. <laughs> see you later, alligator. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so obviously we're talking about this idea of sharing and evaluating what that is um and, and they spend some time you know getting into you know the kind of the timing and the metrics around sharing mm -hmm. um in this blog post so i think that's cool for me though i don't think it's really worth us for, for it's not worth it for us to tell the you know our yeah. listeners what that is again go read the blog post it gets into excruciating detail at some points so much i was like <laughs> Uh, I, how am I supposed to talk about this? Is this a, another language? Mm -hmm. um, but um, one still. thing I wanted to mention before we get to the kind of conclusion of this post is that uh, one thing they don't mention in this post is that you can do sharing explicitly in Haskell. Even if you like normally rely on the compiler to do it for you, um, you can always just make a new let and say let your shared value equal whatever you want it to be in some expression where you use it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And then it's very clear that that will be shared. Right. And... But if you choose the opposite route and have that function call in all, you know, let's say four spots, mm -hmm. it's still going to use the same value. It's not going to evaluate each time. Right. Which is different than other languages. Strict languages would evaluate each yeah. time. Correct? It, if you have some function that takes four arguments or, and you want to pass in the same thing every time and it's f of x, f of x, f of x, f of x, in a strict language, it's going to call that four times. But mm -hmm. Haskell will say, well, that's the same and you didn't hide it behind a lambda, so I'm going to pull that out and only do it once. Yeah. And then it'll be like, and, you know, I won't use it until you need it. You know, I won't actually yeah. evaluate until you need it. <laughs> it's very lazy, which is a good thing for us. Yeah. Uh, I I've, I didn't know that I was missing that in my <laughs> life. But, but now you, you know, do. since switching over to Haskell and being more involved in Haskell, it's been really cool to take advantage of that laziness. Yeah. So do you feel like you've got a good understanding of what this blog post was trying to say? Could you kind of explain back to me what sharing means to you now? Yeah. In so, Haskell, not just in life. Sharing is caring, everyone. <laughs> um but no, I, I think overall sharing is um, in Haskell something that increases performance because obviously we're not going to have to evaluate multiple times, mm -hmm. uh, but it allows us to um, you know, evaluate one problem one time and use that, that um, answer, solution, answer, result, whatever yeah. you want to call it, multiple times. Uh, 
and we don't have to worry about you know it you know gaining more memory in the heap because it's just there mm -hmm. it's available um you know and so sometimes we may not want to do that if we have a large set of data that we only really want to return a few things from mm -hmm. we may want to not share um because it you know we don't want to get our thunk too big who would have thunk it <laughs> uh but you know it's part of the you know people can write code you know without sharing if they want to but i feel like haskell inherently you know, leans towards sharing yeah definitely encourages it which is nice i think it, it helps us write more efficient code um without, without even knowing. really having to think about it yeah right like I had no idea I was sharing all this time, <laughs> but well, I, I knew, but I didn't like, you know, say, oh, this is what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and I think point free, um, uh, is something that took a second to learn and, and mm -hmm. understand. Uh, but the fact that you can compose these functions together and that result is, is shared, um, is nice to know, you yeah. know, um, it's cool that there's this pragmatic benefit of doing this point free thing, which can sometimes feel like a bit of a chore for questionable benefit. Right. So now I, I do think Haskell is, is very nice for, you know, this sharing being inherent. Mm -hmm. Um, and I definitely think, you know, looking behind the scenes, was really cool kind of seeing core a little bit and, and seeing that everything is a Lambda, Yeah. you know, at, at the bottom of you know end of the day, um, for the most part, obviously there's <laughs> values as well. Like things can change, but, um, it's just interesting to see that that's what's underneath. Yeah. It's cool that Haskell, it's such a large language. It has so many features, so many little knobs you can turn and all of it comes down to core. And so that's really all there is to understand behind the scenes. I, I wonder if, if Haskell has a six pack, you know, so strong <laughs> core. Core is just, yeah. You know, I it's got know. an eight pack. Oh, geez, <laughs> I'll never be there. Maybe one day. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think it was a really good article. Um, and it definitely, like I said before, encourage our listeners to go to go check it out yeah go check it out also go check out haskell weekly there's lots of other good stuff in this week's issue in every issue so. yeah we did have a kind of a challenge today didn't we yeah, kind of trying to pick like, something to talk about like, oh this this one's good oh but this one <laughs> so 168 go check it out yeah it's out uh this morning so it's out now out, check your right, internet browser <laughs> your web net browser what? yeah something like that something all something right that internet there thing i think that'll about wrap it us for wrap it up for us Thanks for being on the show with me today, Cam. Of course. Thanks for having me. I uh, had a good old time. Me too. And thank you, dear listener, for listening to the Haskell Weekly podcast. If you liked what you heard, uh, you can find out more at our website, haskellweekly.news. Also, please go rate and review us in iTunes. It helps a lot. Haskell Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV, the tech skills development platform for IT professionals. And also our employer. Yep, that too. Send your sysadmins and network admins to www.itpro.tv for all their learning needs. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week.